Hello, everybody. It is time for our review guide for our test tomorrow. Uh, I've gone through and put all the answers on the paper already, so if you want to just check over your answers and see if you have the fi right final answers, just hit pause and take a look at all of them. If you have an error, you can jump from question to question. Uh, I'm going to put a star next to each one as I talk about them. So if you would like to go to, right, say, to number like four, you can just touch the star by number four, and I'll jump you to the audio for that portion. All right, so for number one, you should have ended up with that answer. Um, if you did it the mathematical way or trial and error, either way is absolutely fine. You don't have to show your math ways. Um, I just want to make sure that if you don't already know the math way that you learned it, because there will be some really difficult equations. <laughs> Same thing with 1B. You can see the answer there. If you had any struggles with it, um, please let me know. Uh, in the morning, I'd be happy to look over the math way with you. <laughs> For number two, it was a pretty straightforward stoichiometry problem. Double check all your molar masses. Double check your molar ratio. This one was already balanced for you, um, so you should have just pulled the 11 and 1 from the balanced equation. Uh, but again, double check all your molar masses. Make sure you're expressing them to one decimal place. And then your final answer should have been to three sig figs at 702 grams. For number three, you had to start by balancing the equation. If you didn't do that, then you were going to have trouble when you got to this step right here and this step right here in that mole to mole step. So if you didn't balance it, pause this, go back, balance it, redo the problems, and you'll probably end up with the right answer. Now this was a limiting reactant problem because they gave you information about AL and information about NaOH. So therefore you don't know which one you're supposed to use, so therefore you have to do them both. You can see we came up with 0.276 and 0.357 grams of H2, the 0.276 has to be the right answer because it's the one that was made in the least quantity. And we know that that's always the correct answer for limiting reactive problems. <laughs> Number four, again, pretty straightforward uh, stoichiometry problem. You just had to realize that this was your theoretical yield. So theoretically, we should have come up with 19.4 grams of C12H22O11. The math way is always the theoretical way. And then that number gets plugged in at the bottom of your percent yield equation. And up top, the 6.84 number came from the problem. That's what they told you you actually obtained in lab. Multiply by 100, and the percent yield on this lab was 35.3%, which is awful. We would hope we would never get that. but. That is the answer based on the math of this problem. <laughs> Number five, we've been given gram values for some initial substances. We're going to go ahead and do a molar conversion. Please note in the nitrogen and oxygen one that the molar masses are not their diatomic molar masses because these things are in a compound with each other. Therefore, nitrogen and oxygen will not be diatomic. So we converted them all to moles, then we took those mole values and found the mole ratio using the one that was there in the smallest quantity, which was this one, the oxygen, dividing them all. We came, uh, when we got those values, they were all within 0.1 of a whole number, so we just rounded them and got an empirical formula of CH2O. Then I took the 180 that was given in the problem as the overall molar mass of the molecular formula, and I added up the molar mass of the C12, I'm sorry, CH2O, which would be 12.0 plus 2.0 plus 16.0, which gives us 30.0. And that's where that number for the bottom of that ratio came in. You get a multiplier of 6, so you multiply carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen by 6. And there is your molecular formula. <laughs> And for the last problem, we wanted to do percent composition. So the first thing you have to do is write the formula for lithium oxalate. So we know lithium is a plus one charge. Oxalate is a minus two charge. When we crisscross, we get Li2C2O4. No reducing, even though they um, seem reducible, because ionic compounds we won't reduce if it changes the polyatomic. We usually do, but if it changes the polyatomic, we don't, and this is that case. So then I figured out my mass of two lithiums, 
and put it over the total mass. I figured out my mass of two carbons and put it over the total mass. I figured out the mass of four oxygens and put it over the total mass. Multiplied them all by 100 and I get my values. Now remember with percent composition we will round to one decimal place and then double check our answer by adding them together. They should equal 100. You can see in this case they equal 100.1 that's okay. 99.9 .9 would also be okay because with rounding sometimes they're not going to be perfect. All right, so take a look through these again. Uh, email me if you have any questions tonight. I will be in my room in the morning. You are always welcome to come in and get some extra help. Um, but just mainly do go back, take a look at your notes, take a look at your homework problems, take a look at the quiz we took on Monday because they will all serve as good practice for the test. Good luck studying and I will see you tomorrow.